ever think that there would be a world where your cute Daily Bumps family oh from Southern California would be scraping ice off the porch? Woke up and we have no water, ladies and gentlemen. We are heating up snow on the stove. It does, right? Floating around, that's a little creature right there. You guys, day two of no running water, and it is a cold, cold day today. I think our high is 20, um, and it got down to seven degrees last night, so it is cold. But we have a little bit of good news. We woke up to this this morning. Ready? So it's not all the way back on, but we've got a trickle, and I'm telling you, that is better than nothing. <laughs> when you just want to, like, rinse off your hands, and you can... That's nice, and it's been nice because instead of having to gather snow, I can easily fill a pot. Might take like a couple minutes, <laughs> but at least I can fill a pot and flush toilets and stuff like that. So honestly, things are looking up already. Um, I was thinking we were gonna go into Monday before we'd see water. Um, and you know, at this point, it could get turned back off if it's like the pressure isn't there. So it's also not um, drinkable yet. So even once it's on, it'll be a while before we can drink it, but you don't really drink the sink water anyways. We use, um, bottled water, but they really, we're on a boiling alert too. So we have to boil our water if you wanted to consume it or cook with it or anything like that. But yeah, things are looking up. I think this is a good, a good sign. It's either hope or false hope. Who knows? Um, but actually kind of exciting is that today is Brian's birthday. It's his birthday. He just had a new song come out, so you guys can go check it out. I'll have it linked down in the description. It's about him and I and how we met, and it's so cute. Um, and so I'm working on a cake for him. I actually already made the cake last night, so now I'm just working on decorating it. So here's our cake, and I'm going to make some buttercream frosting and some filling, and it's going to be delicious. <clears throat> All right, I have... <laughs> I have just finished making the kitchen a sufficient mess, which is unfortunate when we don't have any running water, but I've made cinnamon rolls. I've made buttercream frostings. I've made frosting for the cinnamon roll. And I made the most beautiful looking cake. Happy birthday. Thanks, babe. It's pretty luscious. <laughs> it is. So it's got this fancy cherry. I think it's called black amaryl amarino. Amarillo? Amarillo? Ah, I can't remember. I've been typing it, but <laughs> it's like a black cherry. Usually you put them in like a cocktail, but they're very sweet and delicious. So it's got that filling and then chocolate and then like white and then little cherries right on top. Oh, I want some too. You gotta wait. Look, I got all the baby food. <laughs> Brielle's like attached to your hip right now. I know. She loves you. Is it Daddy's birthday? And you know it. Can you get up here? Say come happy here, birthday, bus. Daddy. Here, bus. Come on. Oh, I found the TV clicker. <laughs> We've got a card here from Ollie. Okay, to Daddy from Ollie. Happy birthday. Look at that beautiful cake. <laughs> happy birthday. Daddy, I love you so much, and I love exploring with you and hanging out with you. Love, Ollie. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right, here's your big gift. All right, Finster, I need you to take baby girl. It's honestly not much, <laughs> considering. What are you talking about? This is huge. <laughs> considering the situation we're in, but. <laughs> is this going to be one of those ironic presents? <laughs> <laughs> you can have to open it. <laughs> oh. It's a dual shower head. Awesome. Even though we can't even take a shower. Can't take a shower right now, but that's okay. You're not turning 33. Shh. But it's all we have. Shush, shush, we only had two threes. Shush, shush, shush. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear daddy. Happy birthday to you. I love how 
how sick I am. <laughs> All right. You ready? Yay! What did you wish for? I can't tell you. For, for some water? For, yeah, for water. water. Uh -huh. Hang on, Brio. It's thick. Wow. She really thick. No. Moment of truth. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That smells so good. Okay. This is a homemade from scratch. <laughs> what did you call it? Uh, it's a black forest. Black forest chocolate cake? Chocolate cake, yep. So Does it's black the, forest just mean cherries? I think so. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you've got how many layers of cherries here? Like three. <laughs> wow. Let's try this. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Is it decadent or is it good? It is so decadent <laughs> and so good. And so sweet. Mm. So buttercream <laughs> just on the outside? Yeah. Oh, I okay. didn't do any on the inside. I was wow. curious if it was going to be enough frosting. Brielle likes it. Is that good? Mama made a good cake. Ollie, you don't like chocolate? I don't like chocolate cake. Now you're having a bomb pop? Yay. <laughs> we are on day three of no running water and Brielle needs a bath, so I've boiled some water. <laughs> Things are looking up though. I shouldn't say we have no running water because we do have a trickle. So that'll be enough to just kind of cool this bath down since I just put two pots of boiling water in. The girl's been sick for about a week now, so she's got a little bit of a runny nose. She's starting to get a little crusty. Huh? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, two pots of boiling water and a little bit of cool trickling water cools it just enough and gives her just enough water for a nice warm bath. <laughs> it is crazy how resilient you get when you lose one of your important resources. You start to figure out ways to like work around it. And honestly, it hasn't been terrible. I feel like um, I mentioned on Instagram that we lost running water and a lot of my messages were like, oh my gosh, like that's terrible, that's horrible. And it's been challenging and it's really told me what we need to be more self-sufficient so that we're not be relying on the city <laughs> and their issues. But it hasn't been terrible. I, I can recognize that we have some privilege in that we have drinking water. There's nobody here that's like overly sick or elderly. <laughs> I can imagine that there are people in our town that are in a lot worse situation without running water and not being able to like clean themselves and drink water because maybe they use all of their drinking water um, from the sink. So, and a lot of people are snowed in. We're not the only people that are snowed in. And that's part of the problem is because we can't leave the house to go get water, um, that's created a much more severe situation. Um, and most people are snowed in. Um, not a lot of people have back roads that have been plowed um, and it's been, one week since the big snowstorm. We did attempt to leave the house yesterday. We packed up the kids. It was Brian's birthday, obviously, and I'll try to show you guys some of that footage, but we got down the road and then we turned around and came back. The reason we came back though is because we left a little bit too late. If we were gonna do that, we should have done it earlier and we knew we would be getting back in the dark um, and taking those back roads in you know, three inches of ice in the dark was not something that we wanted to do. So we ended up coming home, but we're okay. We kind of just were like, let's get out of the house. Today, it's supposed to be a little bit warmer. The high is 34. So we might try to get out of the house, go grab some extra drinking water um, and maybe some other gallons of water. Um, but the trickling water does change everything. We had no water at all for like a solid 24 hours and that was really hard. Um, Trickling water, you can fill a pot within like five minutes with trickling water. So it has changed the game just a bit and it's made it a, a little bit easier. 
So other than taking baths, ooh, it's slippery. Other than taking baths and doing dishes, um, a lot of people are asking how we're how the hand the animals are handling the weather. The animals been great. Um, chickens, they don't mind this cold weather, and the goats don't either. Biggest problem is just keeping thawed water in their coops. So for the chickens, they have a small crock pot in there, but it runs out, so we have to refill it. So that comes from the house. Fresh water for the chickens. Lots of fresh eggs for us. Yay! Got a couple here. Got one. A couple there. Got a couple down here. You guys, how many eggs is that? Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven? Ah! I think that's like the most we've ever gotten. Eleven eggs. I can't even collect them right now because <laughs> because I don't have enough hands. <laughs> Oh man, I'm bummed. I left <laughs> this egg out here yesterday on accident. It got down to six degrees last night. So it froze solid and it cracked. So it's no longer good. This one I also left out here, but it did not crack. So we'll save this one. This one I'll probably give back to the chickens. And as far as the goats, they have plenty of water. <laughs> um, thank God, because lugging gallons of water out to the barn would be a hefty job. <clears throat> but um, they just, their uh, their water freezes. So we have to come out and break it. And then they have fresh water again. But this will hopefully be the last day that we have to do this because it warms up quite significantly this next week. Okay, so I wanted to just quickly wrap up this video um, and give you a little bit of a story time because things got worse. <laughs> um, so... You know, day one was definitely difficult without having uh, running water. You guys can check out that video. Um, we had zero. By day two, we had a trickle, which really changed things. Day three was hard because Brielle's sickness was definitely ramping up and she needed a bath. She just wasn't feeling very good. And so that was a hard day. But by day four, she woke up with a bad fever. Um, and I knew at that point, she'd been sick for a week without a fever, um, and so when I, when I knew she had a fever, I was like, that probably means ear infection. Um, and so I was like, I got to get her to a doctor. And again, we're like stranded up here. Um, but you know, worst case scenario, we can, we, we can find a way to get down. So I tell Brian, um, <clears throat> we got to get her to the doctor. She needs to get on antibiotics, you know? And so, um, I get her an appointment and we don't feel confident that it is a safe day to drive down the hill, <clears throat> but we attempt anyways. Um, and so <laughs> we have driven down this one hill a few times and it had been fine. But because the weather has melted and froze so many times at this point that the hill, and it's not our driveway, it's a different hill. The hill had officially become ice, ice, like slick ice not even just like regular sloshy ice and so when we got to the top of the hill and we started to go down we literally started sliding down the hill and so um we just we were going really slow anyways and she's crying in the back we did not film this day because it was just it was hard it was like you know I'm just trying to take care of our sick baby and so um yeah, we're sliding down. We get our foot on the brake. We're stopped. But if we take our foot off the brake, we start sliding down the hill again. So <laughs> we eventually um, were able to find a, like a spot that we were able to stop and take our foot off the brake. We get Brielle out of the car. I get out of the car because I am also pregnant. And Brian's like, I am not about to take my baby and my pregnant wife and slide down this hill. But the only way to get down this hill is to get down the hill. <laughs> so um, it is on our neighbor's property. So our neighbors came and um, just like made sure that we were warm and safe while Brian drove <laughs> the truck down the hill. And he did get it down the hill. And um, it was a little bit scary and it definitely did some sliding, but we made it down the hill. And um, that was <laughs> definitely a crazy day. Um, we ended up getting her to the doctor. She did have an ear infection. So we got her on antibiotics and medicine and 
all was good and right with the world again. But it was a hard day <laughs> without having, um, the running water was definitely difficult, but once you throw in a sick baby, you're like, okay, uh, I'm done. By that day, the trickle had has definitely started to pick up. And by day five and six, we had full running water. And we are officially off the boiling alert because we also were told we had to boil any water that comes out of the faucet because it's not safe for consumption. So everything is good now. <laughs> Baby is all cleared up from her infection, um, her ear infection. And it was definitely an interesting week. I think it was... Uh, it was really fun. I think what's really cool is that we got to have a really cool wintry experience. It was pretty intense. That was probably one of the more intense ways to experience winter, but it lasted one week. And then it, literally <laughs> it warmed up to 68 degrees and it's beautiful outside now. The snow is gone. It is warm. It feels like spring. It's just so funny. I hear this is how Tennessee is. It's very bipolar. Is that what they say? Um, one minute they're freezing and the next minute it is warm in springtime. And maybe we'll have another snowstorm. Who knows? Um, but super, <laughs> it was super interesting, super crazy. And I just had to give you guys a little bit of that story time. Um, and then just to let you guys know to wrap up that everything is fine now and we've got our water and everything is good. So um, <laughs> crazy week. I hope you enjoyed watching it all. If you missed any of our snowstorm adventures, go check it out. It was a lot of fun, a lot of craziness. Um, but I'm going to end this video. So give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and we'll see you guys in our next one. Bye. Boop.